Hey everybody and welcome to another one of our conversations here with Dan. We're going to continue going through some of our big picture things of the Bible, big picture points for each book sort of thing. Not too big of a picture because it's an itty bitty book we're going to do. Today. We are doing a very short book today. Before we dive into this short book, and I'll give him a hint from the Old Testament, maybe you already know where we're headed, um, I would once again encourage you, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, I would really encourage you to go subscribe there. We have a ton of stuff. Dan just got through recording another one of the series that we're working through. So in addition to lots of other stuff, you can continue to get more of the classes that Dan is teaching there. So if you take just a moment, subscribe to our YouTube channel, we would really appreciate it. Amen. So for this week, where are we headed? We are headed to a rather obscure book, Obadiah. Yeah. And we know absolutely nothing about this prophet. His name means servant of the Lord. Other than that, we know nothing about him, except we know hmm. that this prophecy is about Edom. Okay. And the nation of Edom equates with the people of Esau. Yes, a long history between Jacob yes. and Esau. Now, if you're reading a book like Genesis, you will read about Jacob and Esau as persons. Mm -hmm. If you read later in the Old Testament, if you read about Jacob, you're reading about the nation of Israel. And if you read about Esau, you're reading about the nation of Edom. Okay. Okay. And so this um, prophecy is a prophecy against the nation of Edom. You'll see that in the first verse. He says, this is what the sovereign Lord says about Edom. Right. Genesis 36 says that uh, Esau is Edom. So read for us, if you will, um, the first three, first four verses there of Obadiah. Okay. What chapter? It's one chapter. <laughs> there you go. Go ahead. Just the one. So we'll read the first four verses. Uh, the vision of Obadiah. Thus says the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord, and a messenger has been sent among the nations. Rise up. Let us rise against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. You shall be utterly despised. The pride of your heart has deceived you, and you who live in the clefts of the rock in your lofty dwellings who say in your heart, Who will bring me down to the ground? Though you soar aloft like eagles, though your nest is set among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. All right. The, the nation of Edom, the children of Esau, was an interesting um, thing because... First of all, there was a prophecy early in the book of Genesis, in Genesis 25, verse 23, mm -hmm. when um, Rebecca still had um, the, the two boys inside of her womb. Uh, read Genesis 25, 23 there for us. Yeah, it says, The Lord says to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The older shall serve the younger. Notice that there's no if in there. Mm-hmm. The older one will serve the younger. Yeah. This is, we've talked about before, when God makes unequivocal promises, that's his predestined plan. Right. Nobody can do anything about that. Mm. Okay. So, you know the story that is, you know, the boys were born and in this you know, very same chapter, um, you have the story of uh, Esau selling his birthright over a pot of red bean soup, you yep. know. He got and real the hungry. Prophecy <laughs> starts coming true, and we say, oh, that's not fair and everything. But God said before they were born that this was what was going to happen. Yeah. In fact, Romans chapter 9 uses this and says before the guys were born, they hadn't done anything good or evil. God just said the older one's going to serve hmm. the younger one. You can't yeah. change God's plan. Everybody remembers in Genesis 37, verse 29, if you'll look at that. Okay. This is where uh, Jacob stole the blessing right. from his brother by lying to his father. Okay. But this blessing was a prophecy. And in Genesis 27, verse 29, let's read what old Isaac said to a young Jacob. Yeah, yeah. He says, let people serve you and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brother. And may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be everyone who blesses you. Wait a minute. Now, see, that is an echo out of the promise to uh -huh. Abraham. Whoever blesses you, I will yeah. bless. Whoever curses you, I will curse. So God planned that his 
his purpose would come about through the nation of Israel in the bringing of Christ. And everyone that was part of that plan, he said, whoever blesses you, I'll bless. Whoever curses you, I will curse. Yeah. Now, in the book of Obadiah, Esau's descendants, Edom, they've done some bad things to their brother Jacob. Yeah, I was going to say, this is while Israel has been taken captive by Babylon? Well, Israel is under attack. Okay, they're under attack. They're under this... attack from uh, the Assyrians or the Babylonians. And mm -hmm. if you'll go down to uh, verse uh, 8 mm -hmm. um, and, and read a little bit, read yeah. from verse 8 like down to verse... Um, 11. Okay. Uh, will I not on that day, declares the Lord, destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount Esau? And your mighty men shall be dismayed, O Teman, so that every man from Mount Esau will be cut off by slaughter. Because of the violence done to your brother Jacob, shame will cover you and you shall be cut off forever. On the day you stand aloof, on the day that strangers carried off his wealth and foreigners entered his gates and cast lots for Jerusalem, you were like one of them. All right. So this this is is prophesying the total destruction of, of Esau and the people in the mountains of Edom. Mm. Verse 10 says, because of the violence you did against your brother Jacob. Verse 11. Yeah. On that day you stood aloof while strangers carried off his wealth. And again, See? these are talking about the nations, not yeah. the actual people. Babylonians came and they destroyed um, Judah. Yeah, the the people of Jacob, and the Edomites stood by and didn't help. And then they kind of took advantage of it. Didn't and they, they and they yeah. they they did it. They did take advantage of it. In fact, if you start there at verse twelve, he says, "You should not look down on your brother in the day of his misfortune, or rejoice over the people of Judah in the day of their destruction." Yeah. Look at verse thirteen. You should not march through the gates of my people in the day of their disaster. Mm. Verse 14, you should not wait at the crossroads to cut down their fugitives and hand over the survivors in their day of trouble. Yeah, so they may not be the ones causing the problems, but they are sure making it worse. So this book is about, <laughs> is about people who tried to stay neutral when their brother was under attack and even crossed that line and helped the attackers to cut off those that were trying to flee. Yeah. They forgot this in stone promise of God. Whoever mm. blesses you, I will bless. Whoever curses you, I will curse. Yeah. And so they signed their own death warrant. So God Ooh. says, I'm going to destroy you from off of the face of the map. Okay. And if you go down to verse 18, read 18, just verse 18. Okay. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau stubble. They shall burn them and consume them, and there will be no survivors for the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken. All right. Now, the Edomites thought that they were um, indestructible because um, some of you may have heard of the city of Petra, which was in the mountains of, mm -hmm. of uh, Edom, over on the eastern side of the Jordan. And it was cut, literally cut out of the cliffs, and, yeah. and it was in this ravine and cut out of the cliffs, and it was almost impossible for uh, somebody to attack that city. Yeah. And that's what he's really referring to in verse 3 mm -hmm. and 4, where he says, You who live in the cliffs of the rocks, right. make your home on the heights. Verse 4, though you mount up like an eagle and make your nest among the stars, I will bring you down from there. Yeah, that wasn't poetic. That was Lord. literally, they lived in the hills. That was right. Yeah. And not just hills, but the city of Petra is up there in the rock, just <laughs> way up there. And so um, God brought them down. Now, one other passage that connects with this, in this message, it's basically a message of the destruction of uh, Edom. Hmm. In Malachi chapter 1, and... Uh, the last book of the Old Testament. God mentions this. Malachi chapter 1. Okay. And we're going to look here at verse 2 through 3. Okay. He says, I have loved you, says the Lord, but you say, how have you loved us? Is not Esau Jacob's brother, declares the Lord. Yet I have loved Jacob, but Esau I have hated. I have laid waste his hill country and left his heritage to the jackals of the desert. All right. Now, why why would God said 
why would he say, I have loved Jacob and hated Esau? That mm. sounds unfair. Mm. But remember, we're not talking about Jacob the person and Esau the person. Yeah. We're talking about Jacob the nation and Esau the nation. Why did he have to hate Esau? Because he said, mm -hmm. whoever blesses Jacob, I will bless. And whoever right. curses Jacob, I will curse. And so Esau forced God to hate him and curse him because he went against his brother Jacob. Yeah. Okay, so then I've got a question because we're in Obadiah, but the book before in Amos, and correct me if I'm remembering wrong, in Amos the passage quoted in Acts where he starts talking about he's going to redeem the Gentile peoples and the, the remnants and different stuff. So is there a special curse being? I, I think you're, you're thinking of Joel, the prophecy of Joel in the book of Acts. Mm. Let's like, see. In the last days, I'll pour out my flesh on all flesh. Yeah. Hang on. Hang on. It's here at the end of Amos because it's in the it's in the Jerusalem Council passage later on. Oh, okay. Acts um, fifteen. Yeah. There we go. Uh, dum -dum 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 -dum. See, Amos Let's... is talking about the destruction of the northern kingdom of Israel right. as opposed to the southern kingdom of Judah. Yeah. And it's really about something different than may, Obadiah is. Okay. Well, I may find it faster from Acts, but when he talks about he's going to redeem the peoples of Israel because, and then the peoples of the Gentiles. Yeah. And so that's, I guess I'm getting at when he says that he's going to wipe Edom off the face of the earth, was there like a special curse being placed on them as opposed to other Gentile yes, nations? Yes, Absolutely. Okay. Because That's they what I'm themselves to. they themselves turned against Jacob. Now here's the application for us mm -hmm. from Obadiah. If God sets his plan mm -hmm. and that plan is predestined, yeah. like like today our part of the plan is in Christ all the nations will be blessed. Okay. I if found we, my verse. If we choose not to be in Christ, <laughs> yeah. we're gonna be cursed. Mm. We can't help it. Yeah, true. We're sealing our own destiny. Yeah. So the, the, it's funny how things are right in front of you and you keep overlooking them. Yeah. It's right here at the end of Amos in verse 12 uh, where he talks about uh, the booth of David that has fallen will repair its breaches. I will raise up its ruins. I will rebuild it. And then in verse 12 there, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations who are called by my name, declares the Lord. Yeah, Jacob so, is going to possess the remnant of Edom. Yeah. So I'm, So it's like... If he possesses it and takes hold of it, and then later when they quote it in Acts, they're saying, so now he is possessing all of the Gentiles. Is there an element of even for these most cursed of people, there's still God's wanting to redeem them? Well, oh yeah, yeah. It's it's not saying that, that in the grand scheme of things that later on that anybody that lived in that area couldn't be redeemed. It's just saying that because of what they did, God yeah. was going to wreak vengeance on Okay. Them. Yeah. So I guess to go to try to tie the two pieces together, because some people are probably like, and you're probably like, where did you go with yeah, this? Yeah, way so, confused. Uh, but essentially, if you live in an, an antagonistic way. To uh, God's plan. To God's plan, there's going to be a curse. You will be. You will reap the yeah. judgment of the Lord. Period. But even amongst cursed people, there is opportunity for redemption. Yeah, you don't have to turn. keep living that way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, yeah, that's right. Because I think some people can hear a message like Obadiah and think, so once God curses you, there's no chance. If if you are outside of God's plan and you stay outside of God's plan, you're going to be cursed. Period. There we go. Yeah. But you can always decide to join the program. <laughs> You can always change the channel. There we go. There you go. Okay. Anyway, like I say, I, I had something in the back of my head. It's not often I'm in the Old Testament prophets and stuff. There you go. Anyway. That, that's him. That's, <laughs> we'll talk to y'all later. Okay. Just kidding. We're not done yet. <laughs> All right. We were talking after and we wanted to clarify something. And as we talked, I went, ooh, we should record that. All so, right. Here's, here's the deal. Yeah. The promise to Abraham <clears throat> includes the part about whoever blesses you, I will bless. Whoever mm -hmm. curses you, I will curse. But it also includes the part in your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Yeah. The book of Obadiah is about a temporal judgment, a temporal curse, an actual physical army destroying uh, the people of Edom as God's judgment. And 
the, the door time. is yeah in that time yeah. and the door is left open in the promise of Abraham that says in your seed in Christ all the nations of the earth will be blessed so this temporal curse that happened against the people of Edom because they rejected their brother nation uh, Jacob does not mean that people can't be saved eternally see because in yeah. Christ all the nations shall be blessed so our hope is still in Christ. Everybody has hope in Christ. Yeah, and that takes that point from Abraham from the there and then to the here and now to the forever. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. But the point is still. Still, yes. That the plan of God is in concrete. Mm -hmm. And if you adopt a position against the plan of God and maintain that position, you will be cursed, both yep. temporally and eternally, but mainly etern eternally. <laughs> there okay. we go. There we go. So hopefully that clarifies some of it, too, and wraps up some of those thoughts we kind of had hanging out there. Okay. Anyway, once again, <laughs> we'll see That's you all next for today. Week. We'll see you. <laughs> <laughs>